Hi guys, how's it going? I'm in our equipment room here. It's a Tuesday night, Tuesday evening. We uh, potentially think we have a water leak somewhere. Uh, this afternoon, one of our herds guys, Victor, called me. They didn't have water in the parlor. Our uh, water tank was completely empty. We did have water coming in. So I wasn't really sure what happened. But potentially thinking we might have a water leak because we've got plenty of water coming in and way more water going out than I think we should. We were cleaning in our manure building, so it's possible the guys used a lot of water there, but at, at this point, kind of find that hard to believe. Uh, I kind of show you how our, our water, water system works here. So we've got real water coming in that goes uh, through our plate cooler to cool the milk and then it goes into a bulk storage tank and then from that bulk storage tank we've got a boost pump and that pump pumps water out to everything so water in the parlor water for the cows uh, yeah, water every everything in the farm goes through the plate cooler and then through that boost pump the uh, the tank was completely empty we still have plenty of water coming in, that's normal. But the boost pump was running dry. So now we're trying to figure out where the water leak is. Obviously because it's uh, middle of winter, the ground is frozen solid, so if it is frozen underground somewhere, we're not gonna be able to tell right away. We had looked through all the barns, had no water troughs leaking, no water leaking anywhere visibly. No water coming up out of the ground anywhere in the barns. But I can't believe that we pumped our tank empty unless we had less water coming in for a little bit or we used an extreme amount of water. So um, i kind of show you how the valves are set up here because we've got different pipes going to different barns. It's kind of loud here right by our vacuum pump so I'll try to talk a little bit louder. So essentially, water comes from our boost pump and it goes into any of these lines here. Got a couple of them with clothes that are not being used. To start with, me and my dad went through and my dad closed valves and I was watching the pressure gauge just to see if we could notice any difference from one line to the other. And there were two that stood out where pressure came up right away after closing the valves by like five PSI or so. So, and the other, all the other ones didn't fluctuate at all, closing them and opening them. So I'm thinking if we have a leak, it's one of those two, and they're, those two lines go to our south milking barn and our north milking barn. So it could also be because there's a lot of milking cows in those barns, and they drink a lot of water. So really haven't figured it out at all at this point. What we need to really do is close all the valves and all the water troughs and then close these uh, all over here and open them one by one and see if we've got water moving when we open one of them to narrow it down to which run of pipe. But I think we're gonna try to tackle that tomorrow. We, uh, I turned the boost pump down. We usually run it at 70 PSI. I put it on 35. The tank is starting to fill up again, so now I'm wondering if we have a problem or if it, we just coincidentally ran that tank all the way empty, used a lot of water, and maybe had a little water, less water coming in. Hard to know at this point, I think. My plan is to see in the morning if we've got a lot of, if the tank's full, then maybe we don't have a problem. If the tank's not full, then for sure we have a problem. Because throughout the night we don't use a lot of water, I mean way less than during the day anyways. But just wanted to uh, film a quick intro to this video because this could get kind of interesting if we've got a broken pipe somewhere and we need to dig under frozen dirt, concrete, the barn. I'm not really sure what to expect at this point. Got Ian and Eli waiting for me in the truck so I think we'll, uh, we'll uh, head back home. And we'll see uh, what things look like in the morning. It's the next morning here. I was just driving around the farm with the uh, light here to see if I could spot water anywhere. And I noticed this little spot of water that I did not see yesterday. 
and there is steam coming out of this riser so I walked over here and I can already hear water running I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see that but there's water running in that pipe and this is just the drain pipe so there is a water leak somewhere here this is frozen but this is fresh this was not here yesterday so more than likely I'm thinking it's here somewhere it made its way up but then made its way over to this drain pipe and this is running to our manure runoff pond so I know so we're this is our manure separation building that barn over there is the one directly behind the parlor, the one where I'm standing. This is the South Freestall Barn. There's a hydrant down there, and there are two two-inch lines coming this way. One of them comes to about where we are here, to the last water troughs in this barn. They, the lines run outside the barn, and then they go straight in to both water troughs that are on the end here of pen three and four. The other one goes to that there's that valve there then that goes to the shop and to our heifer barn so it's got to be one of these two I'm gonna grab go grab my jacket here out of the office and look in the barn first because it is possible that it's the line going from here to the to the water troughs then maybe we could see it in the barn I'm thinking it's probably out here though just looking at the way that this water came up here it's all to the north of this drain pipe if it was under the barn I would think there'd be more water to the south but gonna grab my jacket and try to investigate some and see uh, see if we can make a little bit of a plan here in the barn here now where that water leak is so that that uh, pipe is just outside this this wall here that drain pipe and then the water pipe is just south of that we'll have to uh, see if we can see anything here but it, I would think if it if it was leaking under the barn the water would have come up in the barn because obviously the ground is not frozen here and it's just clay underneath the sand beds and there's no mud or anything here that I can tell cows are just laying down uh, laying down as normal but at the end of the barn here it was leaking further back, so I'm not sure if it is the, going to the water trough. So there's there's a water trough at the end of the barn, another one on the end of that pen. So the way that uh, most of these barns are plumbed is the main line runs outside the barn, and then there's a hose, black, uh, big black hose, water pipe hose, I don't know what the actual term is of those pipes, but they connect to that two inch and each water trough has an individual one so the idea is that there's no couplings under the barn because that hose goes right from that pipe up in the riser underneath the water trough to the valve in the water trough so that we don't have a water or less chance of having a water leak right underneath the barn I thought it was probably one of those couplers but it kind of looks to me like it's further west but of course we won't really know until we start getting into it because with the ground frozen it's possible that the water that it took to water a while to find that pipe and is not not that close to where the actual break is so we won't really know until we get into it we have to move some snow over there it looks like because there's some pile of snow I'm sure it's rock hard We've had some strange weather here the last couple days. It was, uh, we didn't quite hit 60 degrees two days ago, but it was at least 55. Then yesterday it got down to zero. Now tonight here was negative five degrees. My uh, thermostat showed at home. My phone's saying negative 25 wind chill. So we went from plus 55 to uh, negative five in a very short time not very good for the cows don't think that really is what caused our problem here with the water line but just really really weird weather and then tomorrow or even today it starts warming up again by tomorrow we're uh 
up above for really close to freezing again during the day, which is just weird. Not ideal for cows and calves, but we'll just have to deal with it. And we're gonna have to try to fix that water leak here today with it being uh, below zero degrees Fahrenheit, which is not gonna be fun, but it is what it is. The cows need water and that, that one line supplies, uh, I think this entire barn. So we definitely need to uh, get that addressed. I still have it open. I closed that valve that I think goes to this barn about three quarters of the way. To try to limit some of the water pressure to this barn, but we need to make sure the water troughs still have water. It's not leaking enough to where, it, because our water tank is full now. So even with turning the, the pressure down on our pump to uh, 35 PSI, that's really limited the amount of water that's going out that, that leak. So it must just be a cracked fitting or cracked pipe enough to where you got some pressure on it that it leaks a lot but if we reduce the pressure it's leaking quite a bit less but of course it's kind of a for the waters it's we're able to keep up but for cleaning and stuff in the parlor it's nice to have uh, good pressure on on the water line i called the guy that we've uh, had do some excavating for us and that's uh done water does water lines He's got some experience. He does say uh, he fixes water lines for the city as well when they have breaks. So he's he's got the equipment because we're gonna need a ripper, jackhammer, something to get through that frozen ground. And he's got couplings and repair couplings and whatever we hopefully are gonna need to fix what whatever the problem is. So he's going to be coming out here once it gets light out. So I'm gonna go grab a payloader and see if I can move that uh, snow that snow that's over there because we're gonna have to have good access to that area so we'll uh get started on that and then when we start digging i'll uh start doing some filming again jason just got here and i actually grabbed our excavator out of the shop he's using our excavator started digging we found the direction the water was coming from we got the water shut off and actually at some some point somewhere there's two two runs are tied into each other because we had to shut two valves to get the water to stop flowing so now we're gonna pump the water out which is when to grab the pump out of the shop and then uh, see if we can find exactly where that water leak is Jason started digging where the ground was soft. It was right underneath where we piled some snow. And we saw pretty quickly the water was coming from further east, but he's uh, gonna dig down. I think the plan is to try to dig down the depth so we can keep pumping that water out and then uh, try to find that pipe by hand when, we, when he thinks he's close. It's not caving in too bad. I was expecting it to be a lot worse, but we're right in between a propane line and a power line. So we don't really want it to cave in too much because otherwise we're going to have problems with uh, one of those. We're closer to the propane line than the power line, but hopefully that's that's frozen solid enough and that it's not uh, saturated too bad that it's not going to start caving in. But we'll see how it goes when we get that far.
not there. Yeah, I'm just well. checking to make sure there's no other. Yeah. Where they were just probing in there, that's where the break is. He's gonna dig beside it so we can get the water pumped out and then try to expose the pipe or pipes. There's potentially two pipes there. We'll find out when we uh, get it opened up. There it is. There's, there's two. There's two. Try to clean it out all the way, Sam. Bring it this way. Close it this way. Well, holes in the middle. Clean, yeah, clean everything around it, Sam. More back towards the ladder too. Yeah, that side's gonna get more dumped on it. We just need to. I want more dug towards the ladder. More, more to the other side, Sam. And this side. Yes. Got the pipes exposed. It's at the two inch coupling on the far side. That pipe is uh, the coupling split in half. They went to go get some some parts, a slip coupling and some tools. Hopefully you put it back together. Probably in the pickup point. Well, just, I just put it here. Inside, inside here. There. I might need that forge too. Okay. This is all rolls up for any good.
front now to uh, start cracking the valve open. So that coupler that uh, Jason put on there, it uh, doesn't use glue, doesn't require glue. You slip it over the one side, then get it lined up, slip, slip it over both pieces of pipe, get it somewhat centered up. And the pressure of the pipe seals that, the pressure of the water in the pipe seals that pipe up. So we put some sand back on it, put some clay back on it because, because it's not glued. You do want to have pressure on that pipe so it can't bow, bow one way or the other. But we can immediately turn the water on here, which is what I'm going to do here now. Make sure there's no leaks and then we'll uh, close the hole completely. I think the cows will be happy because they've been without water for a couple hours now. The South Freestyle Barn and then the Heifer Barn, they've been without water. They'll be uh, happy to hear that water running into the water troughs again, I think. Go make sure there's no leaks and then uh, open those valves all the way and turn our pressure back up. I did turn it back up to about uh, 50 here this morning once we figured out which valves they were. And once we know there's no leaks here, we'll turn it back up to 70 is where it normally is. And, uh, hopefully, we'll have no more issues. No leaks so far. Jason's going to load up his ex excavator. He had brought his mini X. It happened to be on the trailer, but didn't use it. Ended up using ours. Ours is a little bit bigger. Was enough to do the job here. He was originally going to bring his big excavator in case the ground was really frozen, but actually worked out that there was some snow here. The ground wasn't really frozen at all, right where he started digging. And just around the hole, there was a little bit of frost, but. Overall, this went about as good as uh, you could expect it to go for a water line break. Not underneath the barn, ground not completely frozen. And I think because that tile line is right there, the ground wasn't too terribly saturated either. Because that could have uh, made things a lot worse if uh, the wall started caving in. Especially we got that propane line right there. It's exposed a little bit, but overall it shouldn't be too bad to backfill this, I think. So we'll... Uh, Go back, open the valves up all the way, and then we'll get this back filled, closed up, and then we'll just have to fix this up in the springtime, I guess. I think I'll uh, I'll end the video here. If you guys have questions, comments, post them down below. I haven't heard heard any cows bellering, but I'm sure after a couple hours uh, without water, they're going to be happy to have some water again. We'll uh, hopefully see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.